Hi friends, welcome back to So Practical. Today I have a super fun and easy tutorial for you and it is just on bags. Trick or treat bags for the, for the littles. Super fun and easy, everybody likes a bag though. So you may not stop at just trick or treat bags. <laughs> Make your own purse as I have done here. This will be my purse until after until Halloween is over. I love this. I bought these this charm pack squares last year at, a sh at the shop hop. Forgot about them. Found them and I was like, oh yes, I can make a bag. <laughs> if you want patchwork bag, but you can just do them solid as well. And any size you want. There is no pattern. You don't need a pattern for a bag. Make them any size you like. Pull a chair up to my sewing machine and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is pick the outside of your bag. <clears throat> and I have picked this black cat fabric. And I did cut it on the fold, so now I need to cut it with the fold, so now I need to cut the fold. And then I'm going to lay these right sides together. If you're using a directional fabric, pay attention to your directional fabric. These cats are kind of all over the place. I think I do have more of them though this way. So whatever way you decide you want the direction of your cats, line them up perfectly, smooth it out. Um, I am going to box the corners of these. So what I'm going to do is line it up on the mat and I'm going to cut a three inch square out of here. If you have a, a three inch square, I don't, I have a three and a half inch square, but I've done all of them with three inch so far. Oh, the fabric is your choice. You can make these bags any size you want. I chose to make mine 16 inches tall, 20 inches wide. And that gives me a good size bag. And then these are three inch boxed corners. So this is the bag I made for Rory and I put a pocket in hers. You don't have to put a pocket in your trick or treat bag, but I thought, well, she can use this all season. I carry a bag all season. Oh. A Halloween bag. To box the corners, you're going to count three over one, two, three. Line it up, and then you're going to cut up to three inches. One, two, three. So now I'm going to cut up to that line. And then you are going to turn it. Well, clearly that package can get here anywhere from up to eight, so I'm going to run the lows. And I'm going to cut that out. Okay. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. So whatever you do on one side, do the exact same thing on the other side. So this completely is up to you. If you want to do two inch box corners, you can do two. There is no official bag pattern. Bags are just so easy. Once you get to figure out how, once you figure out how to make them, you can make them any size anything you want. Super, super easy. One, two, three. One, two, three. I try to be very careful not to <clears throat> go any further because then you have to sew that up before you can do anything else. Okay, whatever you do, however, whatever size you make this, you make the lining and you cut the exact same measurement of squares out of the bottom. If you're going to leave it plain, you can pin it together. We're going to jazz it up. I'm going to go ahead and use this for the lining in that bag too because I have extras of it. 
I bought so much of this fabric when I made my quilt. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up on my cutting board here. Okay, so that gives me 20 across, and now I'm going to cut to the length. I like them a little bit more open and a little bit more shallow, you know, a little bucket bag with a, with a big box corner makes it turns it into a nice size bucket bag. I'm measuring because I'm, I had made a bunch of them, but you don't even have to really measure. You got a square cut out and you, look, it look, you eyeball it and it looks like a good size make it just you might have to measure to make sure that you're if you're going to line it that your lining is the same <clears throat> since i have this chunk i think i'm going to cut my band out of this my decorative band okay again i'm going to go ahead and cut Okay, from here you decide, do you want to put a pocket in? And if so, what color pocket? Let's go ahead and give her a pocket just, just because, get this out of the way, I have such small space here. I am working on a project though. Um, I'm going to get rid of this table because this, where my cutting mat is, is a dining room table in my tiny little sewing room. Okay, cut your pocket out any size you want. I'm eyeballing it, which is one, two, three, six. Six inches. change my mind that's eight by six six by eight so it'll be a scrap there so we'll sew it and put it on this way but I'm going to show you how to make pockets so what we're going to do right sides together I am going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to start here and I'm going to go all the way around and then end here and leave an opening to turn this right side out. Oddly enough, bags are something I make a lot of. I love to make bags. So I'm just going to put a couple pins in where I'm going to leave my opening just to remind myself. Well, one pin. I'm going to do quarter inch and I'm going to start, I'm going to back stitch. I gotta turn my sewing machine on first. Backstitch. Okay. And then Okay, I like to just cut the quarters off. Do not cut into the, don't snip into your stitching. But snip the corners. So we can prevent 
bulky corners. And then we're going to turn this right side out. After I get done making this bag, I will show you my um, Halloween bag. And I, uh, I just made it, and I like to carry a Halloween bag for a purse all season long because it's so cute. And I make them big so that if I go shopping, I can just throw stuff in my, my bag. Poke the corners out. You can use any tool you like. I, this is my favorite one. This is the Clover two-point turner. And then, of course, the purple thing. I don't use this as much. And this is great for pushing through using as a stiletto, but I actually like this one better. Um, you can push corners out with a chopstick. This is one of the most useful tools in your sewing room, I'm telling you. It works excellent. I turn a lot of things inside out with this. And I also have a drumstick. It's got a hair marker on one side and then this this can be a little bit sharp so I tend to use the corner of the hair marker to push out corners. Works wonderfully. And I do believe this is in my sewing room supplies list on my Amazon store. Alright, so now that we have done that, we need to finger press the opening. Now I'm going to take it to the iron and iron it. Oh, my iron didn't push this out a little bit, darn it. I'm going to run a top stitch right across the top. And then here is if you wanted to be extra and put decoration on the pocket, get a black ribbon. Um, ribbon and if you wanted a black ribbon and some orange rickrack, you could do this across the pocket. I'm just going to leave the pocket plain this time. Usually I like to be extra. Sometimes I like to go overboard. I've been known to be that way. We need the pocket. The side that we sewed, this is going to be the top. We're going to catch this bottom opening in the seam when we sew the pocket on, so we're not going to bother with that. I'm just going to press it one more time. So since this is up, pay attention, these cutouts are the bottom of the bag, so you're going to want this on the top. So we're going to pin this anywhere you want it. I'm going to eyeball it. looks good there. Make sure that you separate your fabric while pinning. you what I am missing my nails at this point <laughs> I didn't realize I cut this on the fold now I gotta separate this but I've already started pinning see I'm not perfect I totally messed things up well not completely I didn't completely mess it up okay and then this likes to keep opening so when I sew it I'm just gonna have to remember to check that but because I did that I'm going to open this up and cut it along the along the fold which is far away from my pocket anyway so I'm not worried about catching my pocket okay now that that is done let's lay them right sides together 
Top of my bag, bottom of my bag. Top of my bag, bottom of my bag. I'm going to lay these together. And then for the bottom of the lining, put two inches in. I'm going to put a pin. So two inches in. And then start two inches in here. Just like we did with the pocket. Okay, we're going to take this to the sewing machine. We're going to sew quarter inch down both sides. And then right here only. These bigger projects, I keep hitting my thread and unthreading my needle lately. Make sure you back stitch at the start and stop. My my lining is a tiny bit off right here and that's okay. I should have turned them right sides together before I cut the corners out, but for some reason I didn't. That's normally what I do. Like I did, like I showed you on the first one. Okay, now with bags. Oh shoot, you know what, we needed to sew this pocket on before we sewed. Don't make the mistakes I did, what am I thinking today? The pocket needs to be sewn on before you sew the lining together. Now I'm going to have to painstakingly open this up and make sure nothing's under it. can be done so don't worry if you made this same mistake turn this right actually we're not going to turn it right side out yet I'm going to take the needles out of my, out of my pocket and then we're going to sew the corners Ow. hooked myself already okay we've removed all of those needles we're going to work on the corners now so corners are open we are going to pull them straight across and we're going to match the seams and then, of course, I fold them opposite way to, to make them nest. And then you can clip them. I just kind of do them as I'm sitting here. And I'm these, I kind of, instead of doing the quarter inch, I will do a half inch to make sure I've got everything in there. Okay, one corner here is the other corner. Again, matching up the corners, making sure the seams nest, and then a good half inch. Okay. 
done. Again, just, I just pulled my thread out again. Just make sure that you sew your pocket on first. I can't believe I did that. Rookie mistake. As many bags as I make, here is the lining. But we did it. I mean, pocket sewn on. I got a little thread here. So I'm going to set this aside and we're going to work on the outside of the bag. I'm going to cut out four inches. Again, you can do this. There's no pattern any way you want. I'm going to use a four inch strip. Now I'm going to take this to the ironing board and I am just going to iron the sides in about a quarter inch on both sides and I'm going to leave the outside raw because this, this is going to get caught in the seam. So I'm going to do that first. Okay, my decorative bands are ironed with in, in a quarter inch so that they're going to lay across the bag like so. Now we need handles. Okay, I'm going to do the handles 18 inches. Again, you can decide how big you want your handles. This is scrap I have left over from a quilt, so I'm just <laughs> going to use these. Alright, and then I'm going to flip those over. And these are 3 inches. I've got a 1.5 inch piece of batting. I'm just going to lay that in the middle. I am going to iron this over like this. And then I'm going to, after I iron those like that, I'm going to fold it in half and run a stitch down there. Okay, so I'm going to go iron these. This is step number one of ironing. So you can see I've ironed right around the batting and now I'm going to go back and iron closed and I'm just going to put some clips in. After folding in half I just clip them. Make sure your clips are on there evenly. So then we'll just run a stitch down the side. Actually I run the stitch down both sides so that they look even. A top stitch. Okay, so I've got my handles here. Also, if you don't have clips, you can... I never thought I needed clips. 
and then my mom bought them for me and I use them so much So these clips my mom bought for a birthday gift for me a few years back and I have used them so much. Okay, then I'm just going to flip it and I'm going to sew down the other side the exact same way. Okay, and then there is my other strap. So let's work on the outside of the bag. This is the fun part because you can be so creative and do anything you want. I know I like this about three inches down. This one I do measure. You can eyeball if you want. But I try to three inches there, so I'll move that up to there. And then I'm going to pin this. Ooh, not quite long enough. So I'm going to pull it just slightly because a quarter inch will catch that. I'm going to go all the way to the other end and measure this one first. Okay. And then I'll take a measurement in the middle. They should line up. All right, now I'm going to sew down both sides. Okay, so now we have a stripe going across our bag. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use some Rick Rack. This band is big enough for two strands of Rick Rack, so if I wanted to put two here, I, you can pin it if you want to. I'm not going to measure eyeballing completely. Okay, so I have my back panel piece. For the outside of the bag, I just did one strip on this one so I would know which one was the front. This one is the front. I did two strips, two um, strips of Rick Rack, and then I have my ribbon that I've sewed on. So what we're going to do now is put them right sides together. You know, this is just a basic bag. You can go, you can go hog wild on this. You can line it if you wanted to 
stabilize it, you can use bag stabilizer. You could use batting. If you did batting, you can put your cut out your batting the same shape and then go ahead and quilt it before putting the right sides together. And you would put batting on both sides, front and back, and quilt them. And the same thing if you wanted to use bag stabilizer, you could put it on the front and the back, quilt it first before doing this. Heck, I, when I do it, I put on the stabilizer before I even cut these out. I put on the stabilizer, quilt the whole thing, then I cut out the corners. But for right now, I am not using batting, I'm not doing stabilizer. I'm simply going to do them like this. They're going to be soft bags. I figure they're just little kids. Later on, when they get older, if they say, hey, can you make me a real bag with stabilizer? Then they'll do that. The only thing, when you're doing this, when, you, when you've put on your band, make sure that your band matches up so that it goes around the bag perfectly. That's why we measured three inches down. Okay, and then for this, you do not need to leave an opening. We've left an opening in the lining. So when we take this to the machine, we're going to sew completely across the bottom and completely down the two sides here. And we'll do that first. Oh, <clears throat> and we need to put our handles in. I have a bad habit of putting them in after I sew this together, so I'll show you how I do that. You can sew your handles on first. You would sew them, if you do that, you would just make sure that they are not twisted and you would put them exactly how far apart you wanted them and you would just do the same on both sides. I'm just going to leave it alone there and I'll sew them as soon as I'm done sewing the bag. I don't feel like it's a big deal to do that one first. When I get done, I'll show you all of the other bags that I have made. How many pin cushions or collection areas does one need? I try to keep this one on my sewing machine. It's a magnetic little kitty head, but this falls off all the time, so I keep it sitting next to it. And it's small, so I use it, and then I go put the pins back in their proper pin cushion over on my table. Back stitch, of course. Alright, bag is sewn together. Now I'm going to go ahead and put these on these handles on the bag I'm just going to eyeball it but you can be precise if you choose this is about the middle of the bag so I'm going to clip one and then I'm going to line the other one up and I'm going to sew as close to the top as I can for this stitch back stitching. So that's really up there close. But don't worry because as soon as we put the lining on, we're going to give it a good half inch. This is basically just to hold them down. And then the other side is even easier because you're just going to put them exactly where you put these.
these wonder clips come in small and large. These large ones are nice for these bag handles. And the last one here. These bags are really easy. Or making bags is really easy. Okay, handles are on. Okay, so we've got our bag, it's inside out. We've got our lining with our pocket. And now we're gonna take the lining and we're going to put it inside the bag. Make sure your lining is turned right side out because you want right sides together. Oh, can't do that yet. We got about we have to fix the corners. Okay, so we are going to sew our corners in first now that we've got our Now we've got our handles on, we're going to sew our corners. And again, making sure our seams are pressed the opposite sides so they nest. There's a one corner. And let's do the other corner here real quick. This really doesn't take very long. I cut out bags for my grandkids and I made all their bags except this one before I went to bed in one evening and it was, wasn't very long. And I'm going to show you those in just a minute. Okay, so now that our corners are boxed, we're going to take our lining that we have turned right side out and we're going to put it inside our bag. Make sure your, your lining is turned right side out because we want the correct sides together. And keep your handles in your bag. <coughs> and then we're going to come over here to our seams, our side seams. And we're again going to look at our side seams and we're going to nest them. You can press open if you want. I don't like to. I just like to nest the seams. And I'm just going to clip it around. Again, make sure the handles stay in the bag and we're just going around the bag and we're clipping to the sides making sure that the whole thing is even because I put a quarter inch seam on the lining and a half inch seam on the outside it might make a slight difference in whatever it does I will um, fix at this second. Go back around. <clears throat> sometimes it makes a difference, sometimes it doesn't. It, it didn't seem to make a difference this time. If I had extra fabric in the bag, I would just give it a bigger loop and sew it in. But it did not. It didn't make it didn't make one bit of difference. Okay. 
Our bag is nice and clipped. Hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> I'm just going to, I'm going to start at one of the handles on the side. Make sure everything's perfectly straight. This is where I'm going to do a half inch to make sure I get that handle in good. I'm going to go over the handle a couple of times. If they're carrying anything heavy in there, you don't want the handles to fall off. Candy gets heavy, man. I just back stitch right over it and go over it again. And just spin your back around as you go. I'm just following my half inch line on my sewing machine. plate here. And believe it or not, the first half is sewn already. Boy, that was fast. Again, every time I flip, I just kind of rearrange and make sure everything's straight. to the handles there. And we're done. Okay. So the reason we leave a little gap in the lining, we can now pull, put our hand in there and pull our bag out and turn it right side out. Okay. And then before I go press it, I'm going to actually... Make sure my corners and my bag are out. And then I'm going to sew up my... Make sure you push those out if you need to use a tool, do so. And check and make sure that <clears throat> everything's completely sewn because... Ask me how I know that. <laughs> when I cut too far into my fabric once, this is when I found out at this stage. I had to turn it back inside out and, or, and sew it. Okay, now that those are punched out, I'm going to take the lining where we left this opening. Go ahead and finger press and sew it. You can sew it by hand if you want. I don't have that kind of patience. <laughs> it's trick or treat bags, man. You can clip them if you want to hold them. <laughs> okay. Lining is sewn. I sewed close to the edge. Now you're just going to tuck your lining in. Okay, so what I'm going to do, my art, we still have this pinned, but I'm going to take this over to the iron and I'm just going to press it a little bit and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to top stitch.
Okay, so I have my back panel piece for the outside of the bag. I just did one strip on this one so I would know which one was the front. This one is the front. I did two strips, two um, strips of rickrack, and then I have my ribbon that I've sewed on. So what we're going to do now is put them right sides together. You know, this is just a basic bag. You can go you can go hog wild on this. You can line it. If you wanted to stabilize it, you can use bag stabilizer. You could use batting. If you did batting, you can put your cut out your batting the same shape and then go ahead and quilt it before putting the right sides together and you would put batting on both sides front and back and quilt them and the same thing if you wanted to use bag stabilizer you could put it on the front and the back quilt it first before doing this heck I, when I do it I put on the stabilizer before I even cut these out I put on the stabilizer quilt the whole thing then I cut out the corners but for right now I am not using batting. I'm not doing stabilizer. I'm simply going to do them like this. They're going to be soft bags. I figure they're just little kids. Later on, when they get older, if they say, hey, can you make me a real bag with stabilizer? Then they'll do that. The only thing, when you're doing this, when you when you put on your band, make sure that your band matches up so that it goes around the bag perfectly. That's why we measured three inches down. Okay, and then for this, you do not need to leave an opening. We've left an opening in the lining. So when we take this to the machine, we're going to sew completely across the bottom and completely down the two sides here. And we'll do that first. Oh, <clears throat> and we need to put our handles in. I have a bad habit of putting them in after I sew this together, so I'll show you how I do that. I'm backward. You can sew your handles on first. You would sew them, if you do that, you would just make sure that they are not twisted and you would put them exactly how far apart you wanted them and you would just do the same on both sides. I'm just gonna leave it alone there and I'll sew them as soon as I'm done sewing the bag. I don't feel like it's a big deal to do that one first. When I get done, I'll show you all of the other bags that I have made this week. <laughs> oh, I better grab my little pin thing. How many pin cushions or collection areas does one need? I try to keep this one on my sewing machine. It's a magnetic little kitty head, but this falls off all the time, so I keep it sitting next to it. And it's small, so I use it, and then I go put the pins back in their proper pin cushion over on my table. Back stitch, of course. And again, I'm actually doing a half inch on the, this outside. It's really not going to affect my lining much. bags leave you a lot of wiggle room. Okay, now I'm going to completely sew the bottom.
all right bag is sewn together now I'm gonna go ahead and put these on these handles on the bag I'm just gonna eyeball it but you can be precise if you choose this is about the middle of the bag so I'm gonna clip one and then I'm gonna line the other one up And I'm going to sew as close to the top as I can for this stitch, back stitching. So that's really up there close. But don't worry because as soon as we put the lining on, we're going to give it a good half inch. This is basically just to hold them down. And then the other side is even easier because you're just going to put them exactly where you put these. These wonder clips come in small and large. These large ones are nice for these bag handles. And the last one here. These bags are really easy. Or making bags is really easy. Okay, handles are on. Okay, so we've got our bag, it's inside out. We've got our lining with our pocket. And now we're gonna take the lining and we're going to put it inside the bag. Okay, so I have my back panel piece for the outside of the bag. I just did one strip on this one so I would know which one was the front. 
This one is the front. I did two strips, two um, strips of rickrack, and then I have my ribbon that I've sewed on. So what we're going to do now is put them right sides together. You know, this is just a basic bag. You can go, you can go hog wild on this. You can line it. If you wanted to stabilize it, you can use bag stabilizer. You could use batting. If you did batting, you can put your cut out your batting the same shape and then go ahead and quilt it before putting the right sides together. And you would put batting on both sides, front and back, and quilt them. And the same thing if you wanted to use bag stabilizer, you could put it on the front and the back, quilt it first before doing this. Heck, I, when I do it, I put on the stabilizer before I even cut these out. I put on the stabilizer, quilt the whole thing, then I cut out the corners. But for right now, I am not using batting, I'm not doing stabilizer. I'm simply going to do them like this. They're going to be soft bags. I figure they're just little kids. Later on, when they get older, if they say, hey, can you make me a real bag with stabilizer, then they'll do that. The only thing, when you're doing this, when you when you put on your band, make sure that your band matches up so that it goes around the bag perfectly. That's why we measured three inches down. Okay, and then for this, you do not need to leave an opening. We've left an opening in the lining. So when we take this to the machine, we're going to sew completely across the bottom and completely down the two sides here. And we'll do that first. Oh, <clears throat> and we need to put our handles in. I have a bad habit of putting them in after I sew this together, so I'll show you how I do that. I'm backward. You can sew your handles on first. You would sew them, if you do that, you would just make sure that they are not twisted and you would put them exactly how far apart you wanted them and you would just do the same on both sides. I'm just gonna leave it alone there and I'll sew them as soon as I'm done sewing the bag. I don't feel like it's a big deal to do that one first. When I get done, I'll show you all of the other bags that I have made this week. <laughs> oh, I better grab my little pin thing. How many pin cushions or collection areas does one need? I try to keep this one on my sewing machine. It's a magnetic little kitty head, but this falls off all the time, so I keep it sitting next to it. And it's small, so I use it, and then I go put the pins back in their proper pin cushion over on my table. Back stitch, of course. And again, I'm actually doing a half inch on the, this outside. It's really not going to affect my lining much. Bags leave you a lot of wiggle room. Okay, now I'm going to completely sew the bottom.
all right bag is sewn together now I'm gonna go ahead and put these on these handles on the bag I'm just gonna eyeball it but you can be precise if you choose this is about the middle of the bag so I'm gonna clip one and then I'm gonna line the other one up and I'm gonna sew as close to the top as I can for this stitch back stitching so that's really up there close but don't worry because as soon as we put the lining on, we're going to give it a good half inch. This is basically just to hold them down. And then the other side is even easier because you're just going to put them exactly where you put these. These wonder clips come in small and large. These large ones are nice for these bag handles. Okay, and the last one here. These bags are really easy. Or making bags is really easy. Okay, handles are on. Okay, so we've got our bag, it's inside out. We've got our lining with our pocket. And now we're gonna take the lining and we're going to put it inside the bag. Make sure your lining is turned right side out because you want right sides together. Oh, can't do that yet. We got to We have to fix the corners. Okay, so we are going to 
So our corner is in first, now that we've got our... Now that we've got our handles on, we're going to sew our corners. And again, making sure our seams are pressed the opposite sides so they nest. There's a one corner. And let's do the other corner here real quick. This really doesn't take very long. I cut out bags for my grandkids and I made all their bags except this one before I went to bed in one evening and it was, wasn't very long. And I'm going to show you those in just a minute. Okay, so now that our corners are boxed, we're going to take our lining that we have turned right side out and we're going to put it inside our bag. Make sure your, your lining is turned right side out because we want the correct sides together. And keep your handles in your bag. <coughs> and then we're going to come over here to our seams, our side seams. And we're again going to look at our side seams and we're going to nest them. You can press open if you want. I don't like to. I just like to nest the seams. And I'm just going to clip it around. Again, make sure the handles stay in the bag and we're just going around the bag and we're clipping to the sides making sure that the whole thing is even because I put a quarter inch seam on the lining and a half inch seam on the outside it might make a slight difference in whatever it does I will um, fix at this second. Go back around. <clears throat> sometimes it makes a difference, sometimes it doesn't. It, it didn't seem to make a difference this time. If I had extra fabric in the bag, I would just give it a bigger loop and sew it in. But it did not. It didn't, make, it didn't make one bit of difference. Okay. Our bag is nice and clipped. Hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> I'm just going to... I'm going to start at one of the handles on the side. Make sure everything is perfectly straight. This is where I'm going to do a half inch to make sure I get that handle in good. I'm going to go over the handle a couple of times. If they're carrying anything heavy in there, you don't want the handles to fall off. Candy gets heavy, man. I just back stitch right over it and go over it again. And just spin your bag around as you go. I'm just following my half inch line on my sewing machine. On my guide plate here. Believe it or not, the first half is sewn already. Boy, that was fast. Again, every time I flip, I just kind of rearrange and make sure everything's straight.
cut to the handles there. <clears throat> and we're done. Okay. So the reason we leave a little gap in the lining, we can now pull, put our hand in there and pull our bag out and turn it right side out. Okay, and then before I go press it, I'm gonna actually make sure my corners and my bag are out. And then I'm gonna sew up my Make sure you push those out if you need to use a tool, do so. And check and make sure that <clears throat> everything's completely sewn because, ask me how I know that. <laughs> when I cut too far into my fabric once, this is when I found out at this stage. I had to turn it back inside out and, or, and sew it. Okay, now that those are punched out, I'm going to take the lining where we left this opening. Go ahead and finger press and sew it. You can sew it by hand if you want. I don't have that kind of patience. <laughs> it's trick or treat bags, man. You can clip them if you want to hold them. is sewn. I sewed close to the edge. Now you're just going to tuck your lining in. Okay, so what I'm going to do, my art, we still have this pinned, but I'm going to take this over to the iron and I'm just going to press it a little bit and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to top stitch. Okay, I hit it lightly with my iron. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch it. And to top stitch, I want this to be my top. So I'm going to, first off, get that out of the way. <clears throat> you can start anywhere you want. I like to start on the handles for some odd reason. I'm going to do a quarter inch in. But again, when you're making these bags, everything is your choice. I'm doing a quarter inch in for this top stitch. You could do less than that. You could do an eighth. You could do a half, whatever you want. Oh, that hurt that pin. Okay, and then here's the front of our bag. We sewed this ribbon to the side so that I could just simply tie a bow. And if you have ever put a bow on a bag before and made the bow first and then sewed it on, it gets funky. So I thought it would be better if I just... So there you go. That is our bag. Let me move you over to the table for a better view. Okay, so this is the bag we just made with the little bow. This is the bag I made for Rory. Now her fabric is just slightly different than Winnie's fabric. So Winnie's has full cats, Rory's has little cat heads. Evie's bag is dinosaurs. Look, or dragons, look how cute that is little Halloween dragons with little witch hats. It's so cute. I'm completely in love with this fabric. Oh my gosh. And I made all those bags the same size. And then this tiny one is for little baby Amelia. 
she's 10 months old so I made her a little tiny bag and hers is little purple ghosts and I'm gonna look through my drawer because I know I've got Halloween buttons somewhere and I want to put a little Halloween button there and I will sew it rather than glue it and if I have enough I'll put one on Everett's bag too and maybe Rory's we'll see but there's so many things you could do so you can put little decorative buttons Joanne's has the cutest Halloween buttons little ghost pumpkins Frankenstein heads they're so cute um, so you can do you can embellish them like that you can embellish them however you want you know with this band put all kinds of ribbon rick rack whatever you want to put in there um, you don't and I like lined bags but you don't even have to do that and these um, best part are washable so if you take them trick-or-treating candy somehow melts in their bag or they're eating it and they get chocolate on their hands and get it on their bag you can toss it in the washer just take all the candy out first man <laughs> but totally washable and I like to line them because then you can have contrasting fabrics this striped fabric I had actually in my stash so I was super happy about that and it matched perfectly and then the baby's bag being the ghost Everix I used the ghost and his lining and his handles and his band and then the girls I tied in with the checkers but they're so cute let me show you my bag this one is my bag and uh, I use stabilizer so it would stand up I'm using it for my purse my actual wallet everything is in there but I used skulls for the lining and then I had these in my box of tricks sorry I'm having trouble connecting to the wow. internet it looks like an issue with the router and echo device. I, I so swear I didn't even ask for anything. Unplug both of them, then plug the router back in. So because Wait I had these, seconds. I just used those. Once the router is back on, they're the actually gold and silver, internet, but they plug in the echo they device. almost look like matching the gray and the orange. And if you want to use stabilizer, again, you use it just like you would a batting, and you would. So what I did was. I picked out, I had a Halloween charm pack, so I laid them out how I wanted them, and these I laid out five across and four rows of five across. Sewed them all together, ironed them really good, put them onto the batting of this bag stabilizer. I cut out a square the same size as this square. Then I quilted it and I just did some simple quilting. And then I laid them down and cut out the squares on the bottom. So exactly like you do the other bags, just with stabilizer. So that's all there is to making bags. And you can make any bags you want. Halloween, Christmas. I love to carry ho holiday bags. It's just so fun. So this is my purse until Halloween is over. And then you can do Christmas. You could do a summer bag with flowers. You can make your own grocery tote bag bags this way. You can make all your own grocery bags. And then you can make them bigger than this too. And again, completely machine washable. And they make great gifts. So if you've made something you want to give somebody, make a bag to, to put it in. Super cute. So, I guess I'll be off now. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.